Hello. In this video, I show you how to set up real-time replication for VMware vSphere VMs in Nikivo backup and replication and how to create real-time replication jobs. Real-time replication for VMware is an enterprise-level tool and requires specific resources and VMware enterprise functionalities. Before you begin, make sure your environment meets the requirements for real-time replication. For example, ensure vSphere high availability and DRS are enabled. The target data store should have a minimum of 5 GB of free space, and the source ESXi host should have at least 16 GB of RAM. These are just a few of the requirements. For a detailed list of requirements, check the Nikivo user guide under Deployment, System Requirements, Feature Requirements, Real-Time Replication for VMware vSphere. In our setup, the infrastructure has one vCenter server with source and target data centers. DC underscore one is the source data center with a cluster of two hosts along with a source transporter, while DC underscore two is the target data center with a single SE server and a target transporter. The target data center can be managed under one or two vCenters or even operate as a standalone SE server, depending on the specific needs of your infrastructure. Let's head to settings, inventory and check the vCenter we added. Here's DC underscore one with a cluster of two hosts and a source transporter and DC underscore two with an ESXi server and a target transporter. Now, navigate to nodes to add the source and target transporters. You need to install an IO filter on the cluster hosting the source VMs and a journal service on the target transporter. The IO filter manages virtual machine input output operations while the journal service stores disk data on a journal disk to ensure IO data is readily accessible for replication purposes. To do so, click the download button and click the IO filter for real-time replication option and the journal service for real-time replication option respectively. Open the opt file extension and ensure the IO filter bundle has been downloaded successfully. By default, the IO filter bundle file is located in the Nikivo backup and replication IO filter folder. To install the IO filter on the source cluster, first access your vCenter and add slash mob to the URL. From there, Navigate to the content section in the properties table and click on the provided link. Locate and click on the IO filter manager link. Under cluster IO filter info, locate the install IO filter underscore task option. In the VIB URL field, enter the IO filter bundle location. In the comp res field, replace moid in the text box with the managed object ID of the required cluster. To locate the cluster managed object ID, Click on Home in the top left corner of the page and choose Content. Locate and click on the Group D1, Data Centers, link. In the Child Entity row, click the link corresponding to the data center where the cluster is located. Here's our source cluster DC underscore 1. Locate the Host Folder row and click the respective link in the Value column. Under Child Entity, copy the Cluster Managed Object ID in the Value column. Click Home in the top left corner and click on the Content link in the Properties table. Click on the IO Filter Manager link. Install IO Filter underscore task. In the VIB URL field, enter the IO Filter bundle location if it's not already there. Now, paste the cluster managed object ID you copied into the designated comp res field. Click Invoke method to start the installation of the IO Filter daemon on the selected cluster. The IO Filter has been successfully installed on the source cluster. Now, let's install the journal service file we downloaded earlier on the target transporter. Open the opt file extension and run cd slash tmp followed by ls to check if the journal service installer exists. There it is. Copy the installer file name, paste it here and hit enter to start the installation process. Once installed, run the following command to confirm a successful installation. Yes. The journal service is now active and running. Next, we have to create a specific storage policy and assign it to the VM or VMs intended for real-time replication. Navigate to the menu, then go to Policies and Profiles and select VM Storage Policies. To configure your VM storage policy, click on Create. Here, provide a name for the storage policy and optionally add a description. Proceed by clicking Next. In the Policy Structure step, enable host-based rules and, if applicable, the vSAN storage rules. Click Next to move forward. In the host base services step, keep the default settings for encryption and storage I.O. control. Click on the Replication tab and select Custom. Choose the installed NBR filter and click Next to proceed. Review the list of data stores that match the policy and click Next. Check the details of the VM storage policy and click Finish to complete the configuration. 
here's the NBR IO filter I created for the job. Now, let's apply this filter to the virtual machines we want to replicate in real time. Return to the vCenter menu and click on Inventory. Right-click on the needed VM, for example, Win19, and navigate to Edit Settings. Under Hard Disk, select NBR Filter for VM Storage Policy, and click OK. You can select multiple VMs for real-time replication and apply the same filter. Finally, we need to change the acceptance level of the ESX I host to the community level. To do this, select the host and navigate to Configure, System, and click on Security Profile. Under Host Image Profile Acceptance Level, click Edit and Change to Community Supported. Repeat the same steps for all the selected hosts intended for real-time replication. Now, you're all set to create your first real-time replication job. Let's head back to Nikivo Backup and Replication. Navigate to Jobs, click the plus button and select Real-Time Replication for VMware to open the wizard. In the Source step, select the VMs you want to include in the real-time replication job. You can choose one or multiple VMs or even containers like folders, resource pools, data centers, or hosts. Click Next. On the Destination tab, specify the target ESX I host and data store. Optionally, you can also select a VM folder. In the advanced setup, you can skip certain disks if necessary or map this replication process to an existing replica within your environment. Click Next to configure the networks. Enable network mapping rules for your real-time replication replicas. You can either create a new mapping rule or add an existing one. Click Next to proceed. Create or add a re-IP rule by clicking Enable re-IP. If you choose to create a new one, specify both the source settings and the target settings for your network interface card. Click Next to continue to the retention step. Under RPO, set the recovery point objective to minutes or seconds to keep the time between recovery points to a minimum. Optionally, you can fail the real-time replication job if the RPO exceeds the specified time. Under Journal History Limit, specify how long the journal history should be retained in the target site in hours or days. Optionally, you can set a maximum journal size limit a VM can reach in gigabytes. Let's proceed to the jobs options. Specify a job name and optionally set the limit data storage on source host per VM option. The exclude unused blocks option is enabled by default. It filters out unused and deleted blocks during processing. Under replica options, you can choose to modify the replica virtual machine disks. You can either respect original VM disk type to maintain the same type as the original VM or create only thin disk on target VMs. You can also customize the names of the replica VMs. Under data transfer, Configure how you want your data to be processed and select Manual for Transporters to manually select the transporters used for the job in real-time replication. Under Primary Transporter, select a transporter for the cluster and another for your specific source ESXi host. For the target host, you can only select the transporter with the journal service installed. Once all job configurations are completed, hit Finish or Finish and Run to start your real-time replication job. You can switch to the Activities dashboard to view the job's progress. The job status shows running for two VMware virtual machines. And that concludes our how to video. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, click the like button and subscribe to our channel to catch new uploads. You can also download a free trial version of Nikivo Backup and Replication using the link in the description and try real-time replication for VMware in your own environment for 15 days.